Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everyone. This is Joanne Victoria with another amazing episode of the Sanity Project podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, and entrepreneurial success for your entire life. Our guest today is Carrie Leaf. Carrie Leaf is currently a practicing psychotherapist and life coach. She holds her undergraduate degree in psychology with a minor in sociology from the University of Northern Iowa. Carrie completed her master's degree in marriage and family therapy, graduating top of her class from Iona College. She has been a practicing psychotherapist for over 10 years and working within the psychology field for over 15 years. Carrie has worked in the fields of psychology in a wide variety of settings, which includes hospitals, community mental health, youth residential homes, substance abuse, military base, college university, and private practice. Carrie has worked with a wide variety of clients from all ages and around many different identified problems. She has worked with individuals, couples, families, and groups. Welcome to the show, Carrie Leaf. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. Well, I'm grateful that you are here. And um, you have a vast background working in so many different locales with so many different types of individuals. How did, what, I mean, did you wake up when you were 10 years old and say, I'm going to be a psychotherapist? (laughs) I did not, but I would say it was more around 14, 15 years old that Ah. I said that. (laughs) Yeah, I had some insight there. Right, you really did. It was very early on that I had decided this is what I'm going to do. I didn't know exactly what that looked like, but I knew that it would be something in and around being a therapist in, in, in the psychology field. So what did you do before you started college? To, you know, what was going on in your life? Did you have friends or family that had issues and you would observe them from afar or? You know, I think a big part of it was that my dad was a high school guidance counselor and he taught psychology at the community college. Um, so the the information in and around it was there in my life, you know, from him. And then I do remember the point deciding that this is what I was going to do was when I got in trouble and my parents decided they, I needed to go to therapy. (laughs) It wasn't, it wasn't an, uh, you know, seeing if I wanted to, it was like, you're going, um, and having a lot of mixed feelings around that and experiencing that. But then by the end of that process, deciding, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. This is that, you know, so it was that experience of getting my own therapy that like sealed the deal, I suppose. That's amazing because usually I'm guessing you were a teenager at the time. Yes. Yeah. Teenagers resist only because it's their nature. So, but you were on your path to your own true calling at that time. Well, and I resisted. I definitely resisted that poor therapist probably didn't get more than two words out of me the first session or two, but then I came around. (laughs) You showed her. Yeah, (laughs) right. (laughs) So I noticed that you focus on holistic health, which I think that's all there is. So you help integrate the mind, body, and the spirit to help create a foundation for well-being. What methodology do you use primarily? Yeah, so it's it's just what I have seen over my practice working in all those different settings with all of those different people and what I have seen, no matter what they're coming for and what we're working on, these things are crucial and these things work. And so, um, you know, I kind of do have this step-by-step approach that I have developed for my own practice and that I follow 
And the number one important thing with that is a a really thorough assessment, really getting to know the person, you know, all around um, everything about their life and who made them who they are and how their life is operating currently. But then um, I would say the first area that I, I like to jump into is really the body. How are you taking care of your eating, sleeping, exercise, those kind of things, because, you know, that mind body connection. Um, let's build a solid foundation so your brain is is working the best that it can so we can jump into therapy on another deeper level. And I noticed one of the things we covered uh, prior starting recording people, these things happen. We always have a get to know you time. Mm-hmm. So you help people with their negative belief systems, negative for them, and you incorporate EMDR therapy. So can you explain uh, those negative belief systems as well as how EMDR uh, helps and what EMDR is? I would love to. As I mentioned, this is is just so central to my practice. EMDR has been, you know, life-changing for me and I've watched it be life-changing for my clients and therefore my practice. Um, you know, I just cannot sing its praises enough, but that's what kind of led me to really you know, identifying and looking into negative belief systems as um, a, a central to our work together. Um, so working with EMDR, looking at those, identifying the negative belief systems around what what is the problem? What are you coming to me for? You know, so let's say it's anxiety. Well, let's figure out what's the belief system you're telling yourself about yourself. And then we're going to work to Um, figure out the positive belief system that we want you to believe instead. And we're going to let the brain rewire and heal itself and, and do that process. Um, And it's, it's just the results and the progress that I have seen with it have just, it feels like I get really excited, you know, when we're jumping into EMDR with my clients, because the progress, it almost feels like magic every time, even though they're, it's not magic. They're doing a lot of really hard work and, you know, it's neuroplasticity and and they're, they're working on themselves and their brains and their patterns, but it's just so powerful. I've never seen such, you know, great progress in such a short of time with anything but EMDR. Well, for the, uh, for the part of our audience who doesn't know, what does EMDR stand for? Sure. Eye movement desensitization reprocessing. So the theory with the, you know, when we're, we're sleeping, our eyes are moving back and forth and we're kind of simulating that experience because with EMDR, we want to bypass that mental chatter, that conscious mental chatter, that monkey mind that we're aware of. And we want to bypass that and we want to tap into that subconscious train of thought. Um, And so we need basically to get in the zone and to have a distraction so that we can get there. So that's, you know, and it is, it sounds different and it's, we, it's, it seems weird, you know, Um, I have my clients hold the, the paddles, the buzzers and lights and buzzers. So it's, it's different than what you'd think of sitting on the couch, talk-based therapy, um, it is structured, you know, here's step one, here's step two. So it's, it's different than what you typically, typically think of. Um, but it, you kind of mix and match, you know, there still is talk-based therapy in that as well. So you, do you refer to EMDR in your book, Therapize Yourself? I do definitely. So in the book, I'm kind of setting the stage of what it would be like to walk in and and do therapy with me, my process, the approach, how we're going to do the assessment and work on these other, you know, scanning other environments of your life to get a good solid um, foundation, a well-being foundation so that we can jump into something like EMTR. Yeah, I know assessments, people don't like them, but I, everyone, including myself, that has a business has to assess the client, the, the yes. patient, whatever you want to call it, them. Um, and it's really vital because you don't know where people are coming from unless you are, I don't know, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, God gave you the tools to do the, to do the therapy that this particular way, but we need to go deep with, with a client slash patient. Because, and that's not always the truth. And we have to be able to discern what the truth, truth, what the true truth is. Yes, that 
assessment yeah. it is. There's so much that you can overlook or miss or go down the, the wrong path if you don't do a thorough one all the way around. I still, it stands out, you know, really strongly in my memory of in grad school and we had, you know, an assessments in, in diagnosing class. And we were going through student after student after student, and nobody could pinpoint this diagnosis of this, you know, um, made up case scenario, right, with this client. And I remember it because I I won. (laughs) I don't know if you win those things, but I was the one that was able to pinpoint the diagnosis just because it was a simple thing of, they, they found out that she was a, a drinker, but mm-hmm. nobody asked how much, how mm-hmm. much are you drinking? How much are you, how often? And, you know, then come to find out we've gone all this time and, and overlooked the drinking aspect when actually she's drinking, you know, six drinks every night, oh. right? It's all those, it's all those details and being thorough that really you, we do, we have to scan all of those environments. Yes, and I think uh, the listeners who are trying to, number one, understand how Carrie Leaf is focusing on EMDR, how you do that. You have to go deep, and then you go deeper than that. It doesn't stop because once uh, the client stays and comes back for the second or third, I don't know how long people stay with you, session, uh, you find out more because the client finds out more about themselves. Yeah, because their beliefs shift and they don't know it until they go to sleep and then they get up and they go, oh, <laughs> look what happened. Yes. And so often we're just going through life, you know, day to day and we don't always connect those dots of, oh, I do this in my life right now because of, you know, X, Y, and Z from my younger years. We don't necessarily connect those dots or we don't necessarily know what things might have had a bigger impact on us on a subconscious level than we thought just because we're not consciously thinking of it, right? And our actions on our day-to-day are mostly driven off those subconscious belief systems. So you really do have to dig in, go deep, look at the past to wake up to why you're doing what you're doing now, the patterns that are being created in your life. So, do you refer to what you just said or in any manner, shape, or form in your book, Therapize Yourself? Yes, absolutely. Um, definitely talk about the, the, the patterns that develop some of my own path. I talk about my own pattern in there briefly. Um, and that the fact that like that is generally where we can see where a negative belief is affecting us is if we keep seeing ourselves doing the same thing over and over in our life and then wondering why am I doing that? And then telling ourselves not to do it. And then here we go and do it again. There's a negative belief behind that. Absolutely. My experience is that people don't even know they're doing something over and over again. Yes, that Um, is a thing too. Yes. (laughs) Unless somebody reminds them because that's the pattern. And patterns, it's obviously difficult slash almost impossible for one to tell somebody else how that they need to change a pattern if they don't know what it is. Right, you know. right, and that come and that is where the assess a thorough assessment comes through, right? Like, oh, I see, you know, this is a pattern generationally, maybe, or in your family, or since you were in high school, right? Sure, yeah, patterns and um, negative beliefs are, um, I hate to say, in vogue, but I think they've become very clear now. It's becoming very clear that we, after we're born, I'm just. This is going to be my observation. After we're born, from the moment we're born, we pick up things and we absorb them and they become a pattern. And the pattern that you have when you're four can be repeated when you're 44. And someone like yourself, Carrie Leaf, author of Therapize Yourself and using EMDR as a process, it will help you. Now, I understand from your website that you... um, do online therapy? Yes. Okay. So do you use Zoom? Is it just your phone? What is your methodology? Yes, I do. I have um, the confidential plan with Zoom. So I'm on the computer doing Zoom. 
Um, and it's a mix and match, whether I'll do in person or telehealth or, um, yeah, zoom with whatever, if we're doing, I do some coaching and and some therapy. So that's also going to depend on where the client lives. Okay. So listeners, you, Carrie Leaf is available to you in any way you want it to be. The both of you create um, a relationship, and if it's in person, it's in person. If it's online, it's online. And I think the last couple of years has helped a lot of people who have not worked online do so. So how can people get in touch with you, and which is the best website to find you, and so on and so forth? Yeah, so the best website is going to be carryleaf.com. And then the social media that I'm most active on is going to be Instagram at Carrie Leaf Coaching. And then the book is on Amazon and you can get the link to the book either on Instagram or my website, both. So I didn't see your book, didn't look for it, tell you the truth. But do you have some <laughs> testimonials in your book that's that should be discussed now? I did not put any testimonials in my book. There's a couple testimonials or on Or reviews, my- excuse me, or reviews. Oh, sure, sure. There's testimonials on my website and then reviews. Amazon has a handful. I think there's 12 or 13 reviews on Amazon. That's pretty good. Um, that's where people need to go. I mean, whenever I'm buying anything on Amazon, my first thing is to go to the negative because I just want to see what kind of people are reading, whatever it might be. Yeah. When they're reading it, what their perception is, because it might be, mm, that doesn't sit right with me. So sure. it's important to people who are, number one, I try to tell my guests in every episode, re-listen to this podcast with a pen and paper. So if you're driving, obviously not. But if you're, you know, at home, however you listen to podcasts, even in front of your desk, um, have a pen and paper because you're going to miss something here, guaranteed. Uh, You'll hear it again and you'll hear, oh, I didn't hear that the first time. Now you're going to do that. So once you put it to writing, hand to paper, it goes in your body in a different way. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, all maybe you, Carrie, can describe to the listeners how it goes into their beingness when they write, take notes. Yeah, I don't think that I can necessarily get into the science behind it, but anytime we're doing any kind of repetition or getting mind and body connected, it's just hitting at a different level. Absolutely. So, you know, that's the powerful, that's the power of journaling too. It, it's, It's one thing when we hear something. It's one thing when we write something. It's one thing when we see it. You know, we just get different levels of clarity. Absolutely. And what else did I want to ask Carrie? Okay, so is there um, any information free that you provide that's located on your website? Yes, jump onto the website and you'll find some freebies. I know there's an assessment, a little mini assessment to just like kind of check in. How are you doing in life? What areas, you know, you scanning each of your environments? What what's an area I could work on that kind of thing? Um, There might be another meditation resource. I need to get up there and update it myself. But there's a couple on there. (laughs) Yeah, I I went through it. And uh, number one, it's a lovely website. Uh, It's very clear. And uh, it makes a difference for people to contact you. Sure. You know, if it's clear and it speaks to uh, a potential client, a prospect, as I call them, um, I think people need to pay attention to that. So it's Carrie Leaf Coaching on Instagram, carryleaf.com on website, and Carrie Leaf has a blog, and you can contact her at Carrie at carryleaf.com. And would you, again, give the words for EMDR so we can sign off with that? Yes, eye movement desensitization reprocessing. Yeah, it's not painful, people. No. No, it's not painful at all. And it'll always, it always works to some degree. So I want to thank Carrie Lee for being here today. This has been great information. And um, thank you, Carrie. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It's been my pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts.
check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.